Recursive subdivision sounds cool and all, but what is it? Well, if you've ever used a subdivision modifier, then you have recursively subdivided before, since recursive subdivision just means applying a subdivision operation over and over. Usually, subdividing a mesh means that the subdivision operation is applied on the entire mesh, but with geometry nodes, it's possible to just subdivide parts of the mesh, and by repeating this selective subdivision, we can arrive at some pretty cool results. So in this video I will show you how to do selective recursive subdivision in Blender, as well as how to use the new extrude mesh node in combination with that to create some pretty cool meshes. Let's get into it. Select the cube, then head over to the geometry nodes workspace and press new to add a new node tree. The first step is to separate the faces of the mesh that should be subdivided from the faces that shouldn't. Add a split edges node and a separate geometry node. I set it to face. This node has two outputs, and if you don't specify selection in the selection input, all of the geometry will be routed to the selection output. Basically, unless you specify otherwise, all of the geometry is considered to be selected. There are a few different ways to create a selection in this context. For example, you can use a random value node and a compare node with some threshold value as the selector. Or you can use a noise texture instead of a random value node. Or really any texture that outputs some sort of gradient, random or otherwise. But I will use a random value node for now. So now that we have separated the geometry with the selection, we need to subdivide it with a subdivide mesh node. All we have to do next is to bring back the other parts of the mesh. And we can do that with a Yarn Geometry node. This works because the separate Geometry node doesn't actually remove anything. It just separates the geometry into two groups that can then be accessed and manipulated separately. The downside of selective subdivision is that while all the faces in the end are still part of the same mesh, they are no longer connected by shared vertices. This means that smooth shading no longer looks correct, since it is calculating the shading for each face individually. This would also be true without the split edges node, though in that case the shading would be calculated on the entirety of the separated geometries, instead of the individual faces. Just something to keep in mind. Now that we have created a selective subdivision, let's make it recursive. Select the nodes we just added and press Ctrl G to create a node group. Connect the seed socket of the random value node to an empty socket of the group input. Then do the same for the B value of the compare node. Press N to open the property sidebar, then rename the B input to threshold. To exit the node group, you can either click this arrow in the corner, or press tab. I will also rename the node group itself to selective subdiv. From here, you can just duplicate the node group with Shift D to make the effect recursive. And since we connected both the seed and threshold to the group input of the node group, we can control those values separately for each group until we get a distribution of subdivision that looks interesting. Once you're happy with the subdivisions, you can select all the node groups and once again press Ctrl G to create a new node group, then press Tab to exit it. I will rename this new node group Recursive Subdiv. It's just to keep the node tree more organized, and you can at any time enter the node group by pressing this symbol here. And from here you can add or remove subdivisions as you please. So with the recursive subdivision done, let's extrude some faces. Add an extrude mesh node, a face area node, and the math node set to multiply. Connect the area to the multiply node, then connect that node to the offset scale socket of the extrude mesh node. The face area node returns the area of each individual face of the connected geometry, and we can use that to make bigger faces extrude further than smaller faces. We can then use the multiply node to dial in the extrusion distance. 
As you might have noticed, the extrude mesh node has a top and side output, and these outputs can be used to select either the top face of the extrusion or the sides. This can for example be used to scale the top face with the scale elements node. It can also be used in combination with another extrude mesh node to limit the extrusion to either the top or the sides instead of both. And while the offset scale is usually used to push the extruded geometry outwards, by setting it to zero, then scaling the top with another scale elements node, we can essentially create an inset on the face. This inset can then be extruded again with just the top as the selection. And of course, you can also extrude inwards by using a normal node, then using a vector math node set to multiply, to multiply it with negative 1, to reverse the normal direction. But why settle for just squares and rectangles as faces? With a triangulate node, you can convert every quad of the mesh to triangles instead. And once you have triangles instead of quads, you can convert all faces to vertices and all vertices to faces with a dual mesh node, which will give you all kinds of cool patterns. And why not change the random value node within the selective subdiv node group to a Voronoi texture for example, to create patterns in the selection. What I'm trying to say is that, with this setup, you can and should experiment. And since it gives you immediate feedback whenever you add or remove something, it's really fun to play around with. And since it is only using the actual mesh that the Yarmtron's modifier is applied to, you can use the setup on pretty much any mesh you want. Though I would be careful around high poly meshes. I hope you found this video helpful and that you learned something new. See you next time.